Welcome, 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 and two more welcomes, welcome, and welcome to everybody out there, part of our continuing series, where we talk to reporters, writers, activists, anybody on the left, anybody on the right, as long as they can form complete thoughts, we want to provide it to you unedited and unaltered, so that you could do this thing that was popular back when I was in high school called thinking for yourself. Maybe it will happen again, maybe it won't. We'll see. With us today, it's our pleasure to have... Joe Rowitz. He's the head of Dragon Chain Foundation and Dragon Chain Incorporated. Uh, now, typically, we have a lot of academics on and activists. Joe is very experienced with technology, the internet, and popular technology and how the population has used it. So I view him as an expert in the subject. And I'm going to ask him some questions that we've asked some of the other professors, but he's going to be able to come from a different vantage point. So we've been looking at a lot of academics. Now we're talking about to someone who's actually in the field itself and has been for a long time. Let me introduce you to Joe Rhodes real quick, then we'll talk to him. Joe is the founder and chief executive officer of Dragon Chain. He has over 20 years of experience in software architecture, focusing on security and scalability. He has created and led multiple technology startups since the mid 1990s. He's a visionary and thought leader in blockchain technology, having led or contributed to projects in the space since 2010 at companies such as Overstock, Coinbase, Symbiont, and the Walt Disney Company. Uh, we covered that. Originally created at the Walt Disney Company in 2014, Dragon Chain is a hybrid blockchain platform focused on solving business problems at an enterprise scale. The blockchain industry is projected for massive growth in the near future. Gartner, a leading research and advisory company, projects that the blockchain industry will grow to $3.1 trillion by the year 2030. Dragon Chain holds multiple holy grail patents on blockchain technology, including patents on blockchain scalability, interoperability, and enterprise process orchestration with the integration of the prng at the core of our architecture we now offer every customer quantum safe data protection dragon chain has proven enterprise scalability executing over 260 what does mm stand for million million transactions on a business system in just 24 hours uh the idea for dragon chain initially stemmed from an encounter between a member of joe's team and himself in 2010 where he's shown the Satoshi Bitcoin white paper and was intrigued by what he saw. After learning about Bitcoin and exploring the technology, Joe and his team started doing everything they could to experiment, learn about, and build upon the technology. One eventful day, Disney reached out with an opportunity, leading Joe and his family relocating across the country to Seattle. While at Disney, he started working on a variety of internal projects, but there was one that particularly caught his eye, the blockchain platform project. They put together a small team to start this endeavor and began expanding and broadening the blockchain project and getting more support from across the company. Over time, Joe and his team were able to put together a solid team, build out various proofs concept for blockchain technology and achieve some fascinating results. Uh, and that's how Dragon Chain was born. A little bit more about uh, Joe's various experience and places he's worked at. Everything I told you is true. And that's what Dragon Chain looks like. Um, Joe, did I say anything wrong? Do we need to correct anything about your bio at all, sir? Nope. Nope. Um, yeah, there's a, uh, it, it, it's, uh, <clears throat> I've had a lot of experience in a lot of different areas because I, I, I kind of sought out, uh, um, trying to learn about different systems over time, right? So I've worked for Lockheed, worked for uh, FBI, worked for DOD, um, you know, the, the, the most challenging projects I could find. That's why I did a lot of that stuff. So, yeah. So you also worked for the Department of Defense. Right. And, okay, wow. Well, you can't talk about what you did for them, I imagine. Or Mostly not. I mean, I can tell you what, there, there were some public things, right? So, you know, I can tell you generally what the systems, you know, biometric systems, um, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, interesting stuff. But. Um, so you have been around the technology industry since at least the 1990s, approaching 20, 30 years. You've worked for multiple different companies. You said government and private sector, um, and then, you know, Dragon Chain. Uh, I wanted to ask you about your opinion of social media and about its impact on us as a culture. And really, this isn't a right or wrong thing. It's just your impression from what you've seen. As we were talking briefly before, if you could speak both as 
uh, Joe Rowitz, the person we know on the internet, but also just as an American with two working eyeballs who's living in this country. Um, I'm sure that you have noticed things have become a lot more politically polarized, especially in online space since the 1990s. Would I be correct in saying that? <laughs> I think so, right? Um, yes. Let's start with this one. When is there a point when you can count in your head where you're on the computer interacting with everybody using social media or whatever you use on the internet and you go, wow, this is a lot more aggressive than it used to be. I remember it being a lot more civil. Was there a point, a moment, something? You, I was in Starbucks once and it was October right after Halloween and the guy yelled at me and I go, you know, last year he said, I disagree with you, Joe. And now he's calling me words or something. Is there something you can point to, maybe a personal story or something where you noticed hmm. that's different? Wasn't always that way. Um, Gosh, uh, a single one might be hard. Uh, you know, a couple? I've been, I've been I've been called a racist before for calling out things that were obvious and and not about race is about you know Chinese uh, trying to you know uh, position themselves uh, with uh, in fact with the social media plays some very obvious things you TikTok. know Zoom right TikTok Zoom um, some some really disturbing things that have happened with Zoom and you know we called them out and. Um, people would, you know, call me names because of it. I'm like, well, no, I mean, all I'm saying is we're not using this because it, because of this issue. Right. And, um, definitely nothing, uh, uh, at issue with the Chinese people. Right. Um, it's more their government and, you know, much the same, uh, I would criticize the U S government. I would, I would criticize, uh, a lot of the, the Western, uh, infrastructure for some of the same reasons, you know, they're all, they're all playing this game. Um, and I think a lot of it <clears throat> is intentional, right? Um, the, you know, the, the longer you look at it, uh, and this is my opinion. The, the more yeah, you realize, that's what we want. That's what we want. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the more you realize that a lot of the, the, the people that are put in front of us, it's like, oh, I, you know, this guy believes in X and I agree with this person. So I'm going to start watching them. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a follower of, of this uh, person that more often than not, it's odd that it's a, you know, it's, it ends up being a, like, like if you look at identity politics, right. Um, you know, you probably have seen that it's, it's nearly a meme now um, that if you look at Google trends for, uh, you know, white nationalists and, and other terms that are related, those all, were nearly non-existent in the general press until right after Occupy Wall Street. And so it was almost obvious to a lot of people that, you know, Occupy, Occupy Wall Street showed that um, although there was still some, some uh, binary division about that, uh, uh, that in the end, it was focused though on the bankers and it was focused on the money printers and it was focused on, you know, what, what the hell are these people doing? Um, and all of a sudden the press starts pushing all these uh, other ideas to divide people by race, by religion. Um, you know, they try to, to separate the Muslims and the Christians. They try to uh, separate the blacks and the whites. They try to separate the, the gays and the straights and the, non-binaries and every any other and you look at that and you look at that rainbow that, that kind of represents this you know this odd thing that it's almost like they're experimenting with how far you know how atomic can they make these divisions how, how far can we push these groups uh apart from each other and then you look and you know there was a ted talk and i can't remember the guy's name that kind of you know early on uh when i was working on blockchain stuff got me interested in uh, trying to find some solutions to this in the social media or online community space that <clears throat> uh, he was talking about how various of the social media companies, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, elsewhere, that they were using different approaches to uh, solve some of the things that you could see as legitimate where, you know, people who are, uh, um, uh, abusing other people online, right? Trying to, right. to, to, you know, those things are legitimate. Um, 
But at the same time, his uh, discussion was primarily about how Facebook was using uh, AI early on um, in order to essentially separate uh, various people. That is, OK, if you are uh, if if the AI sees you as a, uh, you know, a Reagan conservative, let's say, versus right. uh, versus a, you know, a, a, I don't know what what other um a group you libertarian or right that they would essentially keep you from seeing uh those other people's posts and it was ostensibly um or at least primarily uh to to try to keep uh the drama down or you know the toxic uh, and theoretically that was at least what was that's what they they, they yeah, said it, by segregating the community in the yes. different groups and so, to an atomic scale. We're going yeah. to stop the drama. That was yes. The that that well that again. I I think that was the <laughs> ostensible. I think that's what they say, right? But I think it was very much in order to to keep people separated. And uh, yeah, I mean that sounds like when fishermen would cut off the legs of starfish to kill the starfish population it only exploded the starfish population right right, right. And, and and exactly it ends up with making people so and and there's the weird thing too because I'm, I'm sure anybody listening uh has had an experience of someone they they uh they know they love they they respect in their life or a family member usually that um you talk to them about certain events in the world and it's really a crazy thing. This is never in my life. I've never had this happen before where they are oftentimes totally ignorant of mm -hmm. the thing um, or they have a built in um, cope or excuse that uh, the, you know, the, the media or Facebook has provided them to answer. Oh, that's because X, right? And it's such an odd thing, um, and you can't really debate people. It, it turns into you know really uh, toxic uh, stuff in real life, and it's a just a strange thing in the world right now. Um, and I think a lot of it is because of you know these uh, social media largely, but general media as well. Um, because I, I think people who, you know, people who watch the uh, what's left of the, the major networks uh, fall into the same trap, too. It's just it's less dynamic. It's it's uh, very monolithic, you know, um, and there are fewer and fewer of those people every day. So um, that's a positive thing, probably. Um, but the, the issue is that, you know, a lot of the social media, especially for younger people, is is just ramping it up. So. Okay. Okay. Well, let, let me play devil's advocate. So there's a lot of people saying social media is using these algorithms intentionally or unintentionally, maybe as you're making a point here, but for whatever reason, they're using these algorithms, fancy computer programs designed to separate us and to make us be antagonistic to each other because it drives traffic, anger and fear of loss are much more powerful drivers in the human psyche than positive things and uh, the ability to gain. It's a weird conundrum in human psychology, but you will fight 10 times harder to have a quarter taken from you than you will to actually gain $100, simply because your mind says, you can't take something that's mine. I will I will kill you for it, literally, is what we're designed. Whereas he goes, hey, do you want to go work over here for eight hours for 100 bucks? I don't know. Let me think about it. It's just the way we're rigged. So, okay, there's also Liliana Mason, who's an expert in this field, who said that uh, humans are tribal. We are born as a species to fit into certain tribes. We're them. Those people across the river are all bad. Why? Because they live across the river and they're not us. So therefore we hate them. And that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing, etc. Here's my issue. Social media wasn't really a driving force in politics till maybe 2014, 2015. It had been around, but as far as its impact really being heavy. I remember a group called the Tea Party was saying Barack Obama wasn't an American and didn't have the right to be a president and was basically a black Hitler in the year 2012. That's way before social media. I remember Bill Clinton 
being attacked for Monica Lewinsky and the entire country that was Republican crashing his name, posters of Monica Lewinsky ever. That was the 1990s, 15 years before social media. How is social media the culprit for all this division when we had massive periods of polarization before? I would say it's not the sole culprit. I, I think it's a, a very powerful tool in uh, uh, in what they've been doing all that time, and what they've been, you know. And I, I would probably, you know, it's kind of a crazy thing, but um, I think it happened way before even the internet. Um, it's just it was uh, much less. Uh, advanced much less um mature and uh you know because you look at drudge report you know the old model thank you that that was internet right and that 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 was at that time you know if, if there was a social media it would have been that would have been the focus then right um and uh i think they realized you know and uh, you know pro- a lot of people probably know too and you know uh some people might think tinfoil hat but uh the whole DARPA project of, um, of, um, gosh, now I'm blanking on it. Um, what was it? Uh, to create the internet life log, life log. Um, essentially it was, uh, a, a, an experimental tool to collect everything about everybody and to get them to put it in on purpose. And it was, you know, it, it was uh, an experiment and it went, uh, it went down, like say they, they shut it down and, supposedly and i don't know i've not verified this but uh supposedly very very shortly thereafter same day same week uh facebook is launched right um essentially oh, facebook is a life log it was a darpa project it is owned it's controlled so i would say you know they are they're doing this and they're using these tools and they're getting ever advanced tools and that's why they hate oh you know what was what's happening with twitter because they've lost a massive amount of uh you know live control of the you know narrative um they can't uh they can't control uh as often the um uh, trending items they can't uh they can't ban people as easily as before right so there's some interesting stuff happening in the world um <clears throat> and you know and there are tools against it and that's a, probably a lot as a technologist uh, a lot of my frustration has been that it is so hard to get the word out about what can be done, right? What can be done to uh, to improve the situation, um, uh, and whether whether you're looking at it from the context of um, uh, liberty in the world, uh, whether you're looking at it as a rational thinker, you know, uh, you know, whatever angle you're coming from. Uh, if you want to progress and you don't, you know, your, your goal is not to control people or to control the tribes, because effectively that's what I believe they're doing. I believe that they have uh, uh, controlled opposition set up on, on uh, both sides and that they get us to just fall into the, the groove of, oh yeah, those guys are bastards. They're trying to do X um, instead of trying to figure out, well, you know, kind of, it doesn't matter who you kind of, I kind of agree uh, with that point. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter that it was AOC that said it, it doesn't matter that it was Trump that said it. Right. Um, there are a lot of things like that. And yet they've largely been able to keep us in these groups. And I think it's falling apart now. I think there's a lot of chaos going on right now because um, information is really coming out. And uh, various sources, whether it's uh, Twitter files, whether it's um, WikiLeaks, uh, that there there's a lot of uh, info that was not available in this. You know, and if you look uh, early internet, early internet was great because it was wild west. It was crazy. Um, yeah, it, I will tell you the odd thing. That's about what I remember. Internet, yeah, early internet. There was some toxic uh, stuff that would. Happen. Yeah, but it was more landfill. The promise. I mean, yeah. when I, when you I remember the '90s and the internet, and it was just a land of promise and great yeah. things. And yeah, there were some, you know, predators online, of course. But yeah. largely, the the view of the public seemed to be this is a great future for all of us. And now, when I see people talk about the internet. 
It's a, oh, God, oh, uh, just a, a future. It, we've totally flipped from the 1990s to the 2020s. It's now seen as a, oh, God, what monster is going to come out of that now? Whereas in the 1990s, it was like, what great breakthrough in human evolution will we make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, and I'll tell you, um, that's why, uh, in my opinion, where blockchain comes in, because, um, uh, but, you know, I, 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 I am very interested in history, right? I, I, I've studied it forever. Um, and um, essentially, blockchain, and this is kind of an odd thing, because it's uh, maybe a little bit out of left field. A lot of people think of blockchain as, okay, it's a, it's a currency. It's, it's a competitor to the dollar. It's, um, you know, it's, there's some very positive things about it that, uh, that are very financial, though, right? Um, we take the approach that it is more than anything uh, a, a provable, a measurable proof of history. Uh, when I say measurable, it is that <clears throat> if you if you take uh, data, right? Let's just say it's a document, it's a you know something that's important to you, um, and it's important to me. Let's say it's a contract. We put it uh, on chain. So we, we put it on the chain and, you know, with Dragon Chain, we do some very special stuff that I don't want to bore the audience with details, but <laughs> we, we try, you know, we, we try to we try to use all of them. Like say uh, we take a, an approach that, um, which I frankly think all of them should, that, you know, if Bitcoin went down tomorrow, we still have an answer, right? We, we still have it on, it's, it's uh, your data is on Ethereum or provable to Ethereum. Right, uh, right. If Ethereum goes away, Binance is there. There's, a, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But the interesting thing about it, um, you know, and one of the reasons that, uh, you know, Bitcoin, its first application as a, a payment mechanism, right, uh, um, is that <clears throat> it would cost a considerable amount of money to change uh, an event, right? To go back in time, you effectively can't after a certain period of time. It's a, uh, you know, there are, and I'm not a physicist, but there, there are some pretty crazy limits to your ability to go back and compete to try to uh, change history. And like, let's say I, uh, you paid me, and I wanted to uh, hook up a whole bunch of Bitcoin miners and change the ledger so that. Um, you paid me more or or maybe uh, uh you wanted to reverse that to say oh i i i actually want to steal that money back right right uh, cheat right so when we put you know and that's the reason that that works but when we put a bit of information on there so let's say it's this contract um let's say somebody challenges it you know uh that <clears throat> we can show this contract to a judge we can show the data to a judge and or jury or whoever, right? Um, a, a, another business partner. And they can look at it and see that um, essentially, we, you know, with our system, uh, the estimate is uh, approximately $10 million a day. It, it's something like a uh, billion dollars worth of energy goes into uh, every quarter, um, essentially um, verifying uh, those transactions. So when I show this data to someone, they can look at it and say, would Joe spend, could Joe spend $3 billion to, sh to fake this uh, that I'm looking at? And, you know, they, they can then make that judgment. Well, for a $20,000 contract, Joe's not going to spend a billion dollars to fake it, right? Um, and that's, that becomes a very interesting thing. Uh, and at first, I, you know, I, we put this out there as, hey, this is a reason uh, and a, uh, a use case for 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 blockchain, and it could be for any business. It could be, oh, I want to put uh, every pair of shoes that I manufacture uh, on chain, so that people can prove that they are mine, that they were really manufactured right. uh, here, and not uh, they're not fake Chinese knockoffs or whatever yeah. else, right? Um, you know, that's a, that's a very uh, you know nut, nuts and bolts, very simple thing, um, and. Uh, we wanted to put that out there. Now, the funny thing is, uh, when you look at the crypto industry, and you know, this might bore a lot of people, but it is it is a crazy. I mean, far more than any other um, industry I've ever uh, been involved with. There is a radical amount of tribalism 
There's a radical amount of intrigue. Uh, in crypto. In crypto. There are, if you start a crypto company that gets any headway, you are going to have more than one nation state intel person uh, coming to work for you. They'll, they'll find their way in. The, it, it's a crazy, it's a crazy thing. It is very important. Um, and at first I thought, okay, it's, it's, you know, because the banks uh, are scared of Bitcoin. They're scared. Uh, you know, the Fed is scared of this, uh, the power that um, could, could do them in. Right. Yeah. And um, at first I, you know, I thought that's a readily uh, obvious uh, thing that was going on. Um, and, uh, much the same, the VCs, uh, really did not like what, uh, was happening in the 2017, 2018, uh, time period, because all of the, it, it was the first of all, it depends if we want to look at it from the elitist point of view or just, uh, somebody trying to make money, but it was one of the few times I think in human history that normal people have had the ability to actually, uh, become, uh, early collaborators, investors, uh, builders with projects that would actually generate uh, wealth, right? I mean, you, you didn't, you don't, you yeah. didn't have to be an accredited investor. Yeah. To take part. You know, I knew, I knew hundreds of people who put in their life savings, you know, but it was like, you know, they were either, uh, not living in the Western world or they were, um, uh, kids you know they were literally like 17 year old kids they put in 1400 dollars and be then sitting on 800 grand right and it was just like this this that it that that's that's something that actually happened and it happened over and over again yeah. and i tell you the elites who uh, who want that uh accredited investor rule in place do not like seeing that right and it's whether it's because uh there's it's crowded opportunity they don't have the opportunity to, you know, be the only, uh, investor or, you know, it's only, it's only my golfing, uh, buddies that are invested in this group. Um, I don't know why, but as it, as it went further and further along, I am actually thinking that they are more so, uh, interested. And a lot of people can see what's going on in the world right now, that some of the control and some of the reason that they're trying to control social media and various other media is, that they're able to change history, that they can, they yeah. can, in, in fact, censor information yeah. that's damaging to, to their uh, narrative. They can push information that uh, supports it. And, you know, they change, they do orchestrated uh, definition changes change yeah. on all of the uh, dictionaries in the world. And so my thought is there, there is a very clear, um, I guess, risk to their world that blockchain will prevent that because if you can prove no this is what the definition of this word was as of this date um and it all of a sudden changed uh that anybody in the world can look at that and can verify it themselves you don't have to go to a you know uh snopes or or you know some group that's going to tell you oh this is true and this isn't um and there are a lot of you know and, and so we built several tools to help um uh, with let's let's say um, <clears throat> you know, we had the uh, first ever press release that contained a cryptographic signature, <laughs> and it was when oh, wow. we, when we launched our project because there you know you think about it it's a, it's a beautiful solution we we had um, a lot of crypto projects in around 2017 that were uh, either attacked by nefarious uh, parties trying to you know scrape scrape money out, you know, they would have people come into um, forums and, you know, uh, basically uh, fake a uh, founder's uh, profile or something uh, and <clears throat> push out that, oh, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're launching the sale today, you know, throw your money to this address. And almost always those guys would pull like 7500 75,000 to $150,000 worth of crypto by doing these stupid little hacks because people get excited and people are you know very emotional about this stuff and it's like it's right. money to be made I'm going to throw it in there and they lose it um so we put in yeah we put in something where look if there's any any major announcement 
it's going to be signed by this key, by this address, so that anybody can verify it. And it was great because, uh, you know, we, just like everyone else, had people come in um, and uh, pretend they were me and, you know, say some crazy thing, send money here. And, and it was always in the middle of the night, you know, because they knew what time zone we were in. We were West Coast at the time, yep. U.S., and... You know, so all of our staff was asleep, right? And uh, it was great though, because every time somebody in Europe or somebody in Asia is like, oh, that's not really them, it's not signed, right? It's it would be signed, you know. And so, we none of our people ever lost any money uh, for that. And so, we you know, we've constantly tried to focus on you know, what, what can we do with these tools? Yeah, you know, that's what that's what we should be doing right now, uh, culturally. Um, and uh, verification and authenticity yep yep and it's, yeah. it's simple right uh and we did we did also um speaking of which you know part of that uh, what i what i talked about with that ted talk and the ai led led us to build um what uh, a platform called den.social that i i do think and we it's it's funny we we uh built some of the original tools uh in den and uh, we actually went and sat down with Twitter, uh, would have been probably 2019, 2020, somewhere around there. And <clears throat> they didn't get it. Right. And I don't know if, you know, I think half of it is, uh, you know, maybe a little bit that they don't, didn't get it, but also there's a lot that they don't want to get. They, they don't want to solve some of these issues of division and because it's intentional, right? That's I mean, a yeah. I, what, what do you mean by that? What did you see at Twitter that made you think like? <laughs> um, we gave them very obvious answers to some of the issues they were having and some that would, in fact, solve their uh, fiduciary duties. Because, you know, at the time they were losing money. They were effectively. Uh, uh, how do I say? I mean, they, they you know, they had a lot of uh, users and they had a lot of investment. Right. And they were mostly off. They were not making a profit or were rarely making profit. And, you know, we told them, look, if you if you plug this in, essentially what uh, Musk is doing now with some of the API tools and some of the uh, paid uh, accounts to get a check mark, you know, because we couldn't get I couldn't personally and our company, even though we had uh, hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff, we couldn't get a blue check mark because politically we, you know, apparently oh, didn't that's interesting. The right slot. Right. And. Oh. We you're saying, oh, 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 you're saying the blue check mark was based upon politics and not just being established? Yeah, it's politics and who you what? knew. Yeah. And wow, it's... I didn't know that. My God. Would this have something to do with the Twitter files as exposed by Elon Musk that showed yeah. the federal government was directing the uh, Twitter agency to control and remove certain posts? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Just curious. Yep. By yep. the way, I wanted to add in, before you even said Facebook, I was going to guess Facebook when you were saying some government project. That, because, and I said this, um, I was in Silicon Valley the night or the day or the week they were going to launch Facebook uh, IPO, the initial public offering. And I was getting into an argument with some tech people and I go, something's wrong here. This company has never generated a profit and has a billion dollar valuation. That is, that's not right. And they're like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. That's totally normal. And I go, no, 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 bro. I might not be a tech person, but a billion dollar valuation when you have yet to make profit in one year, garbage. Yep. And then it comes out later on, like government tie, government oh, tie yeah. to Facebook, government tie to Facebook, yep. government. And I'm like, I called it. I didn't know anything like what you were just saying. I just looked at that one thing and I go, oh, yeah, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. And, 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 you know, the other side of it, too, all of them did this. Reddit did this. Um, Twitter did this. Facebook really did this. And that is um, and I think they've all pretty much admitted to it, that they all committed fraud during both their private investment and their public investment um, by chasing. Uh, if you know anything about the Y Combinator guys that they. They, um, in the early 2000s, were pushing um, exponential user growth. That was the sole uh, indicator of whether 
your venture would get uh, VC money. Um, okay. If you could have an exponential user growth, you're going to do it. And all of these guys did it with bots and uh, Facebook uh, did it with uh, shadow accounts that, you know, they, when you, okay. when you uh, installed it on your phone and say, Hey, can we look at your contacts? And most people, especially back then, say, sure. So I can find my friends. Right. right. And everybody in your contact list, you know, thousands of co people have thousands of contacts because it's, it's keeping every email it's keeping every phone call. Right. Um, and if they didn't have a Facebook account, they did now, but it was called a shadow account and it was counted and it was used to generate funds or to, uh, to attract funds, which in my opinion is fraudulent because those aren't real people. And yet that's how they were driving those. You're misleading in you're, you're straight up lying to investors. So yep. you're pretending those are real yep. people and they're not. And that's in lying on an investment form, which is, I'm not mistaken, is a federal SEC violation. So you would think if they weren't plugged in. Right. But they uh, uh, as I understand, you're not allowed to straight up lie about the assets and profits and liabilities of your corporation. Um, that's a crime, as I'm understanding it. Mm -hmm. you, you don't get to just do that and wing it. Um, right. So uh, someone should be in prison and is not. Uh, let me ask you quick before we get back to it. Uh, the audience wants to know, how is Den Social an alternative to all the other bad, not super good options? Why is Den Social the awesome solution that will save America? <laughs> it's interesting. Um, and I'll try to I'll try to at least uh, keep a high level and then we can go to any depth you want. Right. Um, essentially, uh, Den dot social, every action is on chain. Right. So it's all real history. It's provable. Um, every single action ends up with proof on Bitcoin and Ethereum and Binance and several other chains, depending. Um, and that means every post, every reply, every vote. Um, it's essentially um, <clears throat> broken up into uh, several hundred communities. OK, um, Every community has its own uh, subscriptions. Um, so you can subscribe to community and see its feed, right? So when people post uh, in the history community or in the memes community, uh, you'll see that in your feed. You can also follow people. So if you have uh, somebody who posts in multiple communities, uh, you can follow them. Uh, the thing that, you know, putting it on blockchain doesn't solve anything except uh, history, right? There's some interesting points for uh, how people are rewarded. Well, well, doesn't it make it so we can't have fake posts by fake people? Generally, generally yes. Generally, yes. Um, it is. Oh, generally. Well, it's it's a uh, it's a little more nuanced. Um, okay. I so I I often call it the first um, uh, reference implementation of what I call a behavior system, right? So where the point of the blockchain isn't about finances or trading stuff or investing, um, the point is in trying to uh, track, uh, but with privacy controls, but trying to track and influence behavior in a voluntary way. So it's not like, hey, uh, you have to do A, B, C, D or else you don't get anything. It is instead um, if you do A, this is how it's rewarded. If you do B, this is how it's rewarded. And you might skip C because you don't, you're not interested and you don't care about the reward that C comes or maybe you're not very good at that. Um, and every one of those things is in competition. And um, at the risk of getting too technical, um, do you know what, uh, do you think your viewers know what a prediction market is? Yeah, but go ahead and explain it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's essentially, briefly. it's essentially, um, you put a question up and uh, tip some of the best uh, examples of this are who's going to win this uh, election, you know, some gubernatorial right. election or something that people can essentially bet on it. And, you know, it's uh, most of the studies have proven that generally uh, the, uh, the, the outcome is best when you have real money involved. You know, if it's fake money, people don't care as much. So I was like, Oh, I'm going to say this person is yeah. going to win just because, um, but when you have real money at risk, um, what it does is it brings in the people who have more knowledge about it to get a better result, which is kind of what the system is, is inclined or designed to do. And so 
what we do is we put a prediction market um, on every piece of content. And we did it in a very um, unique way. Uh, I won't go into the details, but we've created scarcity on the system that has to do also with reputation and behavior. So the more um, good you do on the site, uh, the, the better predictions that you make about whether this content is good content or bad content for this particular community, uh, the better content you give and the better uh, rated it is, the, the more essentially reputation score you get. And the more you have of that, the more energy you have and the energy is what you're betting. So essentially you have to be careful not to blow it, right? But if you know this post is amazing um, the earlier and the more you can throw in on that post in either the, that this is a good post or a bad post for, uh, let's say, the, the, um, the politics uh, uh, community, that the, the more uh, rewards you will get, right? And so everyone's competing constantly on, the, on both the content production side, but also on the content evaluation side. That effectively, it's a much more advanced, um, evaluation site and, uh, the, you know, the size of each of the respective prediction markets dictates how much that content, uh, earns. And it, it's super interesting. Um, and it, we've proven that it works. Um, it, you know, we only have, a, in the thousands, um, I, I think, uh, probably, well, I don't know how many exactly, but, uh, thousands of active users, but um we know that it for some reason curtails uh spam which is an amazing thing we rarely get spam, right. and when you see it um it doesn't last long because it gets everybody knows to vote it down so quickly that they're all competing to vote it down and mm. so the system the system knows <clears throat> oh okay consensus is generally that this is bad um we also see a lot less uh drama and when it is uh when there are issues we have, we've obviously had issues of drama where people disagree about uh how a particular community uh should be run or which content is appropriate um but we've never had uh anything in terms of like you know massive amount of uh, toxic uh back and forth um so it's an interesting thing and um <clears throat> Primarily, it's because it doesn't reward you. So if you're on the site, um, you know, you you effectively, um, you, you could do these things, but you won't get a lot of uh, bandwidth. You won't, A lot of people won't see it. So it, it works. And the thing that I like about it and the thing that is kind of hard to describe because um, it is it is very unique in this is that it is something that very definitely, and we know this to be the case, that it influences people's behavior, um, that it's a, it's a voluntary thing though. We're, you know, it's not requiring right. anybody to do anything. Um, we have a very open approach. Um, every, every community, by the way, does have ownership as well. So you can own a part of a community and actually get some of the rewards uh, if it is a vibrant community, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, we have a lot of mechanisms like that. Uh, we have a lot of very interesting theories that we've, uh, developed out and proven where, um, even things like, uh, uh, holes, you know, like say it, it's a software system. So there are going to be some unanticipated or, um, unrecognized holes in the system where someone might find a way to you know, effectively uh, uh, hack the system, cheat the system and get more rewards for doing something that uh, we, the designers or uh, the rest of the community hadn't thought of before. But the beauty is that itself is even uh, uh, functions as a bounty. So if you find a hole, uh, you, you get paid. And uh, once the system recognizes the hole, it can go and fix it and, you know, we, the system is now improved. So, you know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger, that whole approach. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff there. So, I, well, yeah, what I heard was that you had 
figured out how to do what a lot of the professors that I interviewed could only postulate. I would ask them about is social media the cause of polarization? And I'm not so sure it is. But for those that said, yes, it is, I would go, okay, let's say it is. How do we fix it? Uh, considering that all these social media companies did not start out having algorithms to make people angry at each other. They evolved to that when they realized they got more traffic because they're for-profit companies and it got them more money. And every corporation in America has a primary duty to their shareholders. The moment you go public, your number one job is to make a profit, not to cause uh, social good or clean up climate change. Now, there's some move about that, but basically this is the understanding of the corporation. So I would ask these professors, how are we going to get Twitter and Facebook to stop doing the thing that they moved to because it brought them record profits? Go, hey, corporation designed to make profit. Stop doing that thing that made you record profits. What company is going to do that in America? And they go, well, OK, I get that. But if we could have the consumers change so that the consumer said, that's a polarizing post. I'm not going to watch you today, Facebook. I'm going to go to Twitter yeah. and or someplace yeah. where I see less po polarizing posts because I just don't want that. And so their whole thing was, OK, we got to get the public to do this. And then I would ask them, OK, well, how are you going to train the public to ask for something different from social media applications than they've been given over the last half decade, uh, knowing that most people are not techie? So how are you going to do that? And it was, you know, tumbleweed blowing along the planes like nobody had an answer. I see you as actually having a proof of case for what I've only heard people postulate. How do we get, we can't get the corporations to change and destroy their profit margin. Okay, so you gotta change the customers to want something different. Okay, well, how are you gonna get two to 300 million people to undo what they've been programmed to do over the last five days, uh, five years? You have a new social media program that rewards them and trains them not to do that. Mm -hmm. This, I see you having the first workable solution to this hypothetical answer I've seen people only postulate. Well, thanks. And and by the way, I think it, it applies beyond uh, social media that, you know, we've, we've used uh, behavior systems, uh, even at Disney to do various things that uh, at the time we didn't call them that, right. But that was, uh, that was some of the earliest experimentation that uh, I got to do was even on um, dealing with politics uh, in the engineering groups, you know, like so you think about tribalism inside of a of an organization, especially a corporate organization, especially um, a West Coast entertainment corporation, right? Tremendous amount of politics, and um, we did very similar things that uh, <clears throat> pushed it more towards meritocracy, pushed it more towards um, the groups that were implementing this could make better political cases if they needed to when they had issues and could definitely be more efficient because their customers inside the organization uh, were rewarded with very clear, not monetary, but in terms of like um, you get better service, right. you get faster service if right. you provide these details um, in advance or as early as possible, right? Which helps, helps our group because we can then plan <clears throat> and get everything scheduled right, make sure the right people are there. We can be more efficient. We we can work fewer uh, Friday and Saturday evenings, right? Um, so there was a lot of stuff like that, and it's again, it's it was it's all voluntary, and it's a really interesting thing because um, uh, because it works. And you you know you typically need some form of scarcity, which you know blockchain has ample ways to do that. Um, we uh, we came up with uh, quite a few really interesting. We have patents on a couple of uh, those mechanisms on, like, say, time. You know, the fact that uh, if you do something or you hold something um, through time, it's more meaningful than a snapshot. Oh, you have a thousand of these points, right? Um, if I know that you've had a thousand of those points or tokens or whatever, and that uh, you've held them for uh, three years. That's a totally different thing than someone who just came in with a thousand points because, uh, you know, a lot right. of the uh, attacks. In fact, I know a right. lot of people who um, 
Uh, I've spoke to Larry Sanger about this a lot. Uh, some you might want to talk to him too. Uh, I was going to uh, ask you for a recommendation. Like yeah, uh, former Wiki, uh, Wikipedia, Wikipedia founder um, who sees what went wrong, right? And uh, uh, you know, we have kind of the CIA front now. Yes, yeah, it is. Um, and by the way, I think that is another one of the uh, the issues that you know when people see uh, some of these organizations. Uh, including Disney, but uh, also the Facebooks and the Twitters, um, when they are doing these things, I think, I think a lot of the uh, the taught assumption of uh, you know the uh, fiduciary duty to their shareholders is potentially not all real. I think there's uh, that you, you look at Facebook. Who really owns Facebook? Do the shareholders own own Facebook or or does the original founding Intel organization own Facebook? And I think you're going to find that that Intel organization probably has a lot more to do with uh, Facebook keeping its lights on than the shareholders or the ads do. Um, that uh, if you you know if if you have unlimited money, they're going to spend it in ways that uh, that you know maintain control, right? I don't want to go down conspiracy avenue, but yeah. I do want to point out that. Um, because I talked to a lot of conservatives and I talked to a lot of liberals. I'm a liberal, but I grew up with conservatives, so I'm good at talking to both sides here in the Central Valley. Uh, by the way, there's din.social for everybody who wants to take a look on the page, the URL, and what it looks like, so you can go find it yourself. Um, when I talked to a lot of people about it, uh, I just lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Right. Uh, by, by the way, I don't think anymore. Um, that there, that there really is. <laughs> oh, I was going to tell you, you can't patent time. I'm not a lawyer and I'm not a techie person. You may want to have your people look into it. I'm sure. Maybe I'm not getting it right. I'm joking. For the audience, I'm joking. I'm not actually. Yeah, we have, we have. It was granted. It was. Uh, we do have a granted patent on the use, the measure of time related to uh, a blockchain. That is, you know, an event and time combined. And we, the patent specifically specifically calls out its uh, use, its function for security that, uh, you know, if 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 we can prove independently that you've been involved over time in a non non nefarious capacity on our network, now you come uh, and you want to do something. It's a it's a it's a very simple calculus compared to uh, something that doesn't have that you know way to evaluate your history. Um, especially with proof. Right. So anyway, but, but I was, I was going to say, I think, you know, you, you talk uh, conservative, liberal, you talk um, left, right. You talk uh, Republican. We try. Democrat. I don't, I don't think those are real anymore. And I don't know that they were ever real. I just Tell think me. that they're, 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 I know too many people who actually, um, when you, when you hit them with a question, with an issue and not with uh, a, uh, a personality that they're much more likely to agree, right? That they're it, it's less uh, toxic and uh, they can actually speak rationally. But when they're pointed to, oh, it's Trump or oh, it's AOC, then it it just goes, you know, uh, crazy. And I they use that uh, to divide us. And I think that's why, you know, it it I do believe that it it did exist before social media. And I just think, like I said before, social media is just a very powerful tool because they're, you know, they're working with um, chemicals in the brain uh, with a lot of it. Oh, you got a follower. Oh, somebody liked your post. Um, you should oh, be yeah. more radical next time. Right. Um, yeah. Like McDonald's so. special sauce. They figured out how to get right to our pleasure centers yeah. Uh, yeah. to a level that's basically addictive. If anybody doesn't know the reason a lot of people like McDonald's, it's somewhere in the 80s or 90s. They started working on uh, palate satiation. So what is the maximum amount of uh, positive sensations you could get through your tongue? And they figured out the maximum amount of sugar they could put into the ketchup packets to put into the hamburgers so that you got the largest sugar reward without noticing that you were. And then they converted that for fries and, and drinks. And then we had the obesity epidemic. So this was intentional. This was designed uh, for people to get it. And it's the same thing with uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they had these algorithms designed to bring them records, amounts of profit, and they didn't care 
what sort of chaos and burned crops in the field it left behind. Who cares? This is America. It's about my profit margin. I don't care about anything else. That's standard. And what happened was that was released on all of us as a population. We didn't know what we were getting into. And about four or five years later, we start to see the deleterious effects of this thing. It was like when um, cigarettes, tobacco first came out in the 1700s, they were advertising it for health. People smoked it, thought it was a good yeah. thing. Now they realized, oh my God, this is killing us. But it was a new thing. They didn't see it. They didn't notice. Like indigenous people got blankets. Oh, this is a great thing. No, the blankets are going to kill you. You just don't know it yet. Yep. So um, we had this thing unleashed upon us. We didn't know. My favorite story whenever I talk to tech people is when uh, Zuckerberg went to the Senate and he had to explain to a senator how Facebook works. And the senator's like, what if I don't like chocolate? And I don't want them to put an ad of chocolate on my Facebook page. And he didn't understand there's already machines making decisions for you. And I was just like, we're never going to regulate these companies. If you got to explain basic Facebook to a legislator, we're never. And guess what? Guess who's never been regulated? Guess who was involved in the Russian hacking the election? Guess who never got regulated? Never got introspected on. There was never any investigations of. Curious? Well, that's interesting. Tech seems to be able to get away with all this stuff. I mean, it has no regulations. Um, I did want to get. It's because of lobbyists. It's because of the. Uh, oh yeah. The, the you know you you have a, uh, essentially a uh, and you know all all of our legislatures are legislators are are ancient. Not all of them, but you know because because of the power, center of power. So people won't vote them out, and the lobbyists put the money in and. Um, Diane Feinstein, Mitch McConnell. Yeah, it's crazy. It's it, and everybody's recognizing that now, right? So That's, it's insane. It's positive. Um, it's insane. Feinstein gave her her power attorney to her daughter, but stayed on as a senator. So she won't even oversee her own personal things, but she'll continue to oversee things like nuclear deterrent because she's on the um, security. Uh, military industrial or military uh, security council. So he gets to advise mm -hmm. things on like nuclear weapons, going to war against Russia, fighting terrorist groups, but she has no confidence in her own ability to manage her own affairs. So that's America. That's what's going on now. We also have, basically we're an octogenarian uh, country. So compared to other nations, we're, there's a few nations that are basically run by people uh, 70 to 80 years of age. Um, and there's a few of them and they're called octogenarian nations. We're one of them. So we're not even considered like a normal democracy. We're considered this kind of old people, oligarchy type thing. Most Americans don't know that. They don't know that we're not considered a yeah. successful democracy or that we're not really considered a free press state. They, they think we are. They don't look at the world global ratings. My, my question to you is two questions. Um, Polarization is a problem. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's saying social media is the culprit. I don't necessarily agree, but everybody's saying it. Why is it Den Social being promoted by President Joseph Biden as the solution for our era? Are other people offering social media programs that reward good behavior and train people to be a higher form of humanity? Are you just one of 50 people doing this? And if you're not, why the hell isn't the government and the media and the politicians and the professors reporting on your solution since they have none themselves? And I can personally vouch for that. I don't know, right? I mean, I, I, here, here's my question, um, and that this is why there's an indicator. You might you might say this is tinfoil hat, but an indicator okay. is uh, with the scalability we have, with uh, the the flexibility we have, with the proof that we have, with the uh, the um, demonstration of um, of sorry <laughs> of what's what's possible on Dragon Chain, um, with the proof that's on Din, right? Uh, we have an, we have another system called Eternal Dot Report. You can go, and you can uh, essentially put any you know you can type out a, a little document and put it on chain for free, right? It's it's somewhat of a demonstration. It's also there as a a, a toolkit, right? Um, we've never had, I tell you, we've never had uh, any venture capitalists come in and say, Hey, Joe what would it take for me to get in here? I think I could, I think I could put some money in on this. I think we could go out and, and make this into a billion dollar valuation. Right. Um, you know, we have all the stuff there. <clears throat> We've proven ourselves all these years. Uh, we're still here. Um, 
even though we're being attacked by the government, right? And I didn't bring it up. Yeah. So so I saw that, thing, but I didn't bring it up. Yeah. The whole thing, um, which you know, you might consider it a conspiracy theory, but there's a reason for that. Right. I mean, I'm not the son of a senator. Um, I don't uh, I'm not a banker. I didn't come out of Goldman Sachs. Um, (laughs) And I've been accused of some very nasty, horrible stuff. I had the L.A. Times, Washington Post uh, and a few other newspapers accurately report on me. I went to Wikipedia I said, here's my official mainstream newspaper sources proving I'm this and not what you say on Wikipedia. I got it changed. Within one hour, it was changed back. I had five other people who weren't me do the exact same thing. Within one hour, it was changed back. So we followed Wikipedia standards. It didn't matter. Somebody didn't want that information up there, although we followed the standards and it wasn't me. I had five other people who were much more sophisticated, never worked. Hell no, you're not going to get accurate information yeah. about you on your own Wikipedia page. I yeah. can verify that for a fact. And so when I found out people were saying they were bagged by the CIA, which I don't know if that's true or not, but the moment I heard that, it go makes sense to me because it, it is it, not about democracy and free information in Wikipedia. No, I'll I personally just, verify that. Yeah, it is. It's definitely uh, also beyond the CIA. There are other intel orgs that are heavily I'm involved. Sure. And and by the way. <clears throat> Dragon Chain used to have a Wikipedia page. It was up to date. It was accurate. We had all the information there about our history. Um, and we learned quite a bit. Uh, very interesting. Um, I think this is some of the reason that we were we ended up being introduced to, you know, that I that I met Larry Sanger, the, the founder, who agreed with us. <clears throat> it is. It would, if anybody uh, actually uh, is exposed to how it works, it is quite eye-opening. Um, they have rules that you can't, like the the uh, the editors can't be paid. The you know it's you know all these rules are there, but they're all yes, none of them are enforced. Essentially, there's an entire economy of very sad humans <laughs> that go around, and you can effectively pay people to vote to not uh, turn off your page. Like they have certain people with whatever types of reputation and, and they get paid to vote. And essentially uh, some group went through and paid for all of the crypto projects to be uh, canned. That is like, none of these are uh, legitimate or what noteworthy. And it's like, <clears throat> dude, I, I considered it uh, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a history buff. Um, that was one of my great achievements that, you know, we're the largest open source project to ever come out of Disney. And we are, you know, we were Disney's blockchain, right? And that I thought is like, if we're forever attached to Disney, which I can, you know, whether or not I agree with um, any of their modern stuff, or who cares? That's an historical thing. And uh, it didn't matter. Wikipedia you know, totally threw, threw us off the site. And yep. Um, yep. You know, yep. And that's, just, that's why I didn't bring up whatever it is that's going on, because I don't know. And I, I mean this, maybe you did it, maybe you didn't do it. I don't know. And I know that they will trash your name and reputation if they don't like you. And if you didn't actually do it, they'll find something and make it up. I have literally seen this on multiple occasions. One of my favorite stories is Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, the monster who molested all these youth, totally acquitted of all charges. How did he go from he did all these horrible things? They had to destroy his career. He's done to every single charge dropped. How does yep. that happen? Yep. That's no really idea. weird. It's almost like there was nothing there at the beginning and it just took years to get it undone. It's almost like people who get into politics or are a threat to political systems can have their reputations destroyed before they're actually able to be a threat. Yeah. No, I mean, can't prove that it's it's not a I don't even think it's a republic, let alone a democracy uh, that it's all controlled. Uh, the, you know, the prosecutors are controlled. Um, the legislators are, are controlled. The regulators are controlled. Uh, the judges are controlled uh, and not always, but often. And, you know, because I've, I've been told by lawyers, uh, it doesn't really we've had money stolen from us. We've had people uh, do, uh, illegal things. We've had people make death threats to our community members, to our team members. I'm sorry. And, no. um, 
and I'm always told by the lawyers, it's like, ah, if a prosecutor isn't interested, they're not, you know, it's not worth, it's not worth pursuing because uh, <laughs> the, essentially it's lawyers telling me the law is not real. There is no such thing. <laughs> the, the whole thing uh, the, that I always remember hearing as a kid, uh, you know, we're a nation of laws, not men, is total BS. The laws are. Unless you got money. Yeah, it's a construct where you you know they can be, you know they can be uh, bent, right? If you have if you have money, unless or, you have okay, money. Yeah, if you're you know again, if you're a son of a senator, you can get a lot of well, things. It, yeah, exactly. Like I had the news, I had different newspapers print lies about me, and I emailed them, called them, saying I need you to print a correction or a retraction. No response. Now, I also saw them print a mistake about Dianne Feinstein. The very next day, they had a retraction at the bottom of the newspaper. That is the only time in the last 15 years. Yeah. And I read a lot of news that I've seen anybody print a retraction. For me, nothing. For a senator, of you course. damn well bet within 12 hours it'll yeah. be up there. So yeah. just a big difference in the two. And that's, and that's why, by the way, control of the social media matters. Because if, you know, let's say it is something very false you have to be able to answer it. And if they can suppress your answer, it's mm -hmm. effectively, you know, it's not uh, part of reality, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're able to, you know, and, and that, by the way, <clears throat> if you see a lot of people uh, talking about AI as a solution, um, uh, you know, double-edged sword, right? Thank um, you. I do, I do think AI, uh, in fact, uh, you know, my son of I have talked about this in the past, that there is a potential future for AI to team up with them with uh the with people <laughs> to to uh change the situation right with their governments right uh or, you know that the, there are there are potentially could be a tool but the reason that you see uh gary ginsler head of the sec giving us uh you know a tech tip you know it's like this this is a dude who is he's not a technologist and he's telling uh he's telling congress that uh, blockchain really is not um, the big thing in the world. That the the big thing uh -huh. is AI, right? And the reason is they can control it. Literally, they train the AI. You know, so they can censor uh, the training. They can censor the output. You know, even if you get all of these points and and the AI is able to um, make a uh, a jump and uh, figure something out by tying these points together. They can censor that output, and they do. And I think that's one of the areas of monetization, uh, whether it's from nation state level or corporate level, um, that is a, a it's it's how AI and how Facebook and how a lot of these groups yeah. have been monetized. Yeah, they're getting money from these sources to censor these things or do these other things. Well, acting like they don't. I wouldn't care if they took money. It's when they act like they don't that right. bothers me. If you go, hey, by the way, Facebook, we took money from these people. They're listed on our page if you want to go see it. Most people yeah. never even bother to check it out and they could do, but they don't do that at all. Yeah. That's why I'm telling corporations, you could, you don't have to be shady. You could be really transparent. Most of the public's not going to take the time to, to research it. And you can yeah. get away with it, but we don't even have that. If you want to screw me over and you put the terms and conditions up front and I say yes, that's on me. Yeah. If you hide well, it from me, that's on you. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, um, the, the crazy thing is, you know, um, I grew up in the 80s, right? So uh, if you would have told right me, yep, yes. Uh, if you would have told me where we would be today, I wouldn't have, it's no way. Is it this, It's like a, a dystopian, crazy future mm. that people don't realize we're in, that we have comprehensive near to universal surveillance of you, of me, of this recording right here. They're listening to us right now. And they might not have a person with, you know, headphones on, you know, listening in a van. It's not that. It is they are recording it so that when Joe says something politically uh, that might be a threat and, and I, you know, get flagged as a threat, they can go and review all my files and find out mm -hmm. what, what did he ever talk about uh, anything that's, you know, uh, X, Y, or Z that we could go after for. Um, housed at the new NSA data 
giant block headquarters I think they built in Utah when President Obama was around. It's a gigantic black building in the middle of the desert for the NSA. All it does is house data, your data, without yep. your permission. Yep. yep. This it's, is America. It's That's unconstitutional. It's it, That's why it's, it is so crazy that we are that far and people are just so far still uh, carrying on with uh, bread and circus. You know, they, I have my McDonald's and Thank I have you. my NFL and that's all, that's all I care about. I'm not going to, it's like, Oh, you know, whatever, Joe, that's, it, you know, it, that doesn't matter, but we all know it now. There's no excuse for, it. and I, you know, one of the positive things is, you know, with uh, WikiLeaks for one, with um, Twitter files for another, with Snowden, um, that it, it, especially with the youth, they're, you know, they they get it. And I think they they don't believe now when the government comes out and tells them something, which I, is a positive. I've seen that. Um, I'm not endorsing him. I'm not endorsing him. So don't call me after the show. OK, simply mentioning a name for the audience. There's a guy called Andrew Tate, not endorsing him. I'm simply mentioning his name. OK, please don't call me, mom. Andrew Tate. Um there's, I've heard that there's a lot of people who are in their 20s and early 30s who are becoming more socially conservative on the internet than uh, the generations older than them because they saw Andrew Tate be destroyed, have his reputation removed and put into prison. And to them, it didn't look like it was legitimate. And so I've heard a lot of them are waking up going, hold on, you can just have everything removed and destroyed based upon lies? what that's possible well hey guys if it took andrew tate to wake you up great i'm not saying that's what happened to andrew tate but if you're aware that we live in a time where the government can do that awesome because they can't so i i'd, I'd heard that and i oh i view that as a, a positive sign yeah well and you look at um mcafee you look at epstein i mean the fact that epstein didn't kill himself right. it was a meme that was what you you know it's like i i that kind of blew my mind that people you know recognize that He's a very sad man and you know he killed himself with the cameras off and all the guards asleep and removed um makes total sense i don't i don't know where you're going here with that no, and, and the uh you know maxwell's uh book has never been released and it's like <laughs> just, uh, i tell my parents this and they're like you don't know he committed suicide i'm like mom look look at the facts really we're debating this well they haven't said it so so I'm like, oh god okay i guess maybe he could have killed himself Pfft, everybody knows that didn't happen right but it's just really stupid well and, and then to, once you realize what he was doing and then that and by the way that's all a part of the same subject the the divisiveness in the country the fact that uh, especially people who are older, who are, you know, who grew up uh, trusting the, the four networks in, in America, right? That those people still are having a hard time not trusting those same sources. Um, and that's, a, that's a big issue, but it's, it's going to crack and, and it's, you know, it's starting, but, um, it's hard to tell what's going to happen. Everybody knows, you know, we, we could come back, um, during the election cycle and it's going to be something you know it's like a, is it going to be riots this this time i don't know it's going to be something you know there, there's going to be something that's going to happen to distract either a pandemic or riots or um you know massive amounts of uh shootings right who knows that they, they will pull stuff like that and uh people people i think largely are starting to get it like even even people who don't agree with each other are tending to uh you know start to to you know have a common mind on some of these things it's like oh that's a little bit a little bit too much of a coincidence isn't it i um, I, I saw this one where they msnbc or cnn walked into a poor african-american neighborhood and they were gonna expect to get some people to use the talking point and they went up to this one guy and he goes all you guys do is cause division and make people hate each other and you could see the reporter was like uh uh like uh how do i get out of this how do i how do i get out of how do i get you're supposed to talk this way sir didn't you know that they didn't yeah he's like i 
sorry, I'm not your stereotype demographic. I'm a thinking human. Yes, I'm an African-American male in a poor African-American community. I also think for myself and I have unique and independent thoughts and you can't assume how I think as an American voter, nor should you. Yeah. And it was brilliant to see this man educate the media on what democracy is. Yeah. You don't get to pick my opinion for you, me. You ask me what my opinion is and then you listen. Yeah. Um, beautiful moment somewhere. If you can find it, it's on YouTube. We're winding down. I got two questions for you. Okay. Um, one thing that I wanted to say was I totally agree with you that I don't know who somebody feels they're out of control and they don't like it. And it reminds me of the Gutenberg printing press. The New York Times has said the Internet is the equivalent in a societal shakeup to the Gutenberg print press. When the printing press came out in the about 1500s, people had to hand write notes beforehand. Then they could print books quickly. As soon as the printing press came out, within about 50 years, you had every major government in Europe got toppled and broken up into new government formations. So this isn't a crazy theory. When the Catholic Church and that empire system lost control over communication, you saw national borders change through violent upheavals almost immediately. And so it's not a foreign concept that somebody doesn't have control of the conversation now. Things could get out of control of them. Of what right. They want. Right. Right. And, and in fact, uh, you can look at it in, in the crypto world. Uh, it, there's an interesting uh, uh, development right now in terms of uh, understanding the historical movement of this, that uh, early Internet, you know, it was designed to be able to survive a nuclear disaster. Right. Right. Uh, that, right. You know, it, the, the whole point of it was the decentralization so that you can always get information. Um, that rapidly uh, with uh, venture capital and with uh, Intel orgs pushing for centralization into, okay, everything is going to go into Facebook. People don't go to websites anymore. They go to Facebook. Uh, people, you know, um, it, it's, it's in controllable, centralized uh, organizations. And it also allowed them to, if you look at it, it allowed them to to ramp up or ramp down uh, various types of information. If something is uh, is not good for the powers that be, we're going to push it down. So <clears throat> you can't get your your uh, voice out there, um, which is very frustrating if you have you know something real uh, to say, uh, and it's really bad for discourse when uh, it, I, I will tell you, like say censorship is is mm -hmm. probably one of the most obvious. Uh, things that people can look at as a tool. Um, I tend, uh, and I have a natural attraction to uh, uh, look at those things which are censored, right? That you know, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, have an axiom. Sense. I have an yeah. axiom that uh, essentially, and you know, it, it might be wrong. I don't know, but I don't. I cannot point to a single uh, topic in history that has ever been censored that wasn't also true. Because they won't censor the the you know the uh, the theories that are they're not true the ones the ones that <laughs> get get censored and so when you see that you're like okay like say when I I was a contractor uh, at the FBI and when um, all the stuff came out with WikiLeaks and and they sent out an email uh, absolutely you're not allowed with your clearance to look at this information. And it wasn't like, oh, don't disseminate it. Don't, you know, don't send it out. Don't, you know, link to it. It was, you can't look at it. And I'm like, okay, you're not going to tell me what I can't look at, right? I'm, I'm, this is still America, right? Um, and, uh, and they thought you know, that was going to work. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, right? So, um, That's, uh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. I, I had a, uh, for a colleague of mine joined the army, went to Iraq, came back, and I was talking about how, the Iraqi military had some new machine that they could put underneath a car to see if there was a car bomb. And I was describing it. He stood up at the table and goes, how do you know that? He's an officer. He's a high ranking officer in the military. And he goes, that's a top secret. And I go, I, I look, I go like this. I go, I, I read it on the New York times. And he goes, what? And he goes, I was literally told two weeks ago that if I released that information, I could be court martialed. That means go to prison. Yeah. You're telling me you read it on the New York times. And I go, yeah, sorry. I, I get your security isn't what, whatever. 
Well, it, on top of the fact, the, who, whoever printed that in New York Times isn't in prison right now. Or, or oh yeah, uh, no, you know, yeah, like, they're like fine. Assange is right. So yeah, <laughs> Assange is another one. But you know, it's like it, it it's so obvious. Uh, you know, they, I, they uh, yeah. I, I I'll just for everybody, whenever you want to talk about free press, because I remember it, it, Russia should not have invaded Ukraine. Okay, shouldn't have invaded them. But when I hear my friends and colleagues go. Those poor Russians, they have state-owned media. They, they don't have freedom like we do. And I'm just like, oh, my God, bro. Like, do you even know what the hell's coming out of here? I'm, yeah. We have state-owned media. What are you talking about? Like, it's not officially owned, but come on. Billion-dollar valuation of Facebook when it had no proven track record with profit? Oh, I'm sure they just did that and didn't have any strings tied. We know there were strings tied to Twitter. So it's all out there. And when you look up uh, press freedom in America – our press freedom is equivalent to Argentina. Yeah. That's not the, good. The fact that UK is like they banned uh, Russia Times or RT, right? Yeah, RT that's news, ridiculous. Right? It's like, why, why? And some of the things that have been said there are uh, quite astounding. And some of them merit at least a look, right? That there's, there's you know, it, it's information. So... I, it's it's an information war. They're trying to curtail the information. And yeah. just because we have so much information out there doesn't mean that we aren't the most misinformed generation ever because of attempts to do that. Uh, maybe I'll have you back on and we can do more philosophical talk about that, um, the deep state, etc. Final yeah. thoughts. Um, you're not you. You're not me. You're a third person watching this video. Wow, did they learn a lot. They're like, boy, I didn't really get that insight into tech. That's so great. I'm struggling to remember everything he said. But it's five days after they watched this video and they're saying, you know, I'm struggling to remember all the tech stuff, a lot of information stuff. I'll probably watch the video again. But there was this one thing that the guy said, and I can't get that out of my head five days later, even when I struggle to remember what the rest of the video is about. What's that one thought you want to be – unsuppressible for anyone watching this video um wow wow um i would say that there there are uh, from a technology point of view there are tools they just need to be used um and uh people need to um i guess be a little more open to uh uh what might be a crazy idea right um that's, that's usually where the good stuff comes from. You know, it's, it's usually somebody saying, this, this seems stupid. This seems crazy, right, Joe? Um, constantly, uh, I will have people s saying that uh, for years now. And almost always, it's 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 right, it's spot on, you know? And it's just, they might not know precisely how, how to use the tech, right? But the point is, you know, if you have a, a you know, a, a reason to be able to prove uh, an historical event, which I, you know, I would think, I would think military historians would want that. I would think that uh, regular yeah. historians would want that. I would, you know, yeah. think that uh, I would think that the news media would want that. They should have their, you know, this is the story as it was. Provably, yeah. uh, here is the change that we made because we had a mistake. Provably, um, yeah. Uh, but you know, oddly enough, the, we've we've really had not uh, we have not seen the interest there. It's crazy to me because. Uh, you know, it all boils down to, uh, false, false economies, maybe, you know, the fact that you have a money printer that can print unlimited mo uh, money and they can invest in the things that will, uh, do what we're seeing here on these charts, uh, means that's what's going to happen. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes as an engineer, I will, uh, go after the thing that I think is the problem and this is the solution but it isn't always the thing that makes the most money because there are um un undisclosed uh drivers to the world and the economy as so, you know there are things that you know it, it, you know if i if i would have uh, gone after oh, okay here here's how i can split people further and make things more toxic i could probably i probably right. have a billion <laughs> billion dollar valuation right right um, right so right uh, about what you're how much is your conscience worth? Uh, yeah. I remember I, reading it. Yeah. And something that might, I should have said this before too. We do a show every week and you're, by the way, you'd be welcome on there. Cause I think, so, I think. Oh, I'd love to go. Uh, it's world blockchain Roundtable, And it, it started as 
the largest blockchain meetup in the country. And we converted it into a podcast because, uh, you know, all the lockdowns and COVID and everything. Uh, it was in Seattle <clears throat> at the time. And we, uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing because it uses DIN and it has uh, essentially its own governance model. So the people who are on the show and the people who ask questions and who get involved, they all end up with uh, a tokenized uh, governance so that they can essentially help us choose the next topic. They can just, they, they can change rules. Hey, you know, hey, Joe talks too much during the intro or something else. They can say, you know, let's get somebody else. And it's all voted on. And it's it's kind of like a, you know, a mini uh, republic itself. Um, and it's it's been beautiful because it's it's gone. I think we're like 200 something episodes. We've, we've been running weekly for a long time. Um, and it's usually pretty fun. And people can come in there and like say if they did have that burning question, it's like, hey, you mentioned this. I want to know more about that. They, they can come in and ask a question there and, you know, they'll get a lot of really, you know, excellent I, I, I would definitely, I will email you about that. I definitely want to go. Right. And if I go, I'm going to bring up why the hell is America not supporting Den Social or other attempts to right. uh, do this good work? Because I've, I've been interviewing people. I don't see any solutions for how to change people with a new social media app. It's just, we'll use the law and we'll crack a whip on those social yeah. media companies and that'll get them to do That's That's yeah. the limit of the ideas. And I'm like, there's yeah. nothing. I'm like, how about you just out-compete them in the marketplace yeah. with a better yeah. product? I'm like, I've yeah. never seen it. So I'm, I'm going to bring that up. Yeah. Um, Excellent. Last question, because I got a blah, blah, blah. Any recommendations? You don't have to name anybody, but we always ask and keep the conversation going. They could be an activist, a technical, a professor, some dude down the street, as long as they can talk clearly about where we are as America with our political issues. Um, um, definitely, I would say Larry Sanger. Okay. Um, I could ping him if you can't. Um, uh, please ping him. I, please okay. ping him. Yeah, he's he's great. Super smart. Really Thank nice. You. Very. He's very um, uh, real too. He, you know, he's, he's there's not uh, not a lot of the fake stuff you get uh, with other people. Uh, yes. Yeah, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying everybody's fake, but yeah, you know, um, he's a great guy. Um, there's also um, I, I think someone you might have even talked to, uh, and he might not you know be willing to come on i don't know but i would uh ask uh i am for i am one of our one of our <laughs> contributors because he's i have he's, had him on oh you have okay good 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 all right because he's, he's really he's very insightful about a lot of this stuff and um he's also exploring he's trying to he's and you know, one of the guys trying to help us figure out how to get uh den out there right um you know, to get people involved. And, you know, we have a bunch of mechanisms in the white paper that um, should bring talent, but it's still hard. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll, I, I might have to think some more. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not the, I will tell you, I'm not the best at bringing um, guests on. We've had, uh, we've had people who helped us bring guests on. Like I, I got to interview McAfee in the past. Oh, I get to that's interview cool. a couple other people like that, but um, uh I'd have to think, you know, I mean, I, I, I definitely, uh, I definitely would be, <clears throat> would be, uh, interested in either coming back, having, uh, I'll, I'll tell you if I can find of any, a uh, few other people to recommend. I'll email you shortly a copy of the video. If you have any recommendations, uh, great. Next time I am for, I am. I will talk about Umbrella Promise. Uh, he was asking about this, but we got to go. I promise you next time. And for everybody, the only reason I'm interviewing Joe Rhodes is I am 4 am recommended him. And I go, nice. who? What? And he goes, you don't know? Then I got schooled. Then I apologized. And then I reached out to you. So here we are. Thank you. I am 4 am Joe, thanks for coming out. You were awesome. I, I, really, I really appreciate it when people in your in an industry are willing to think, you know, outside the box, uh, you're a technology person, but I'm asking a lot of political polarization where are we at questions. And I really appreciate you taking time to go. I think it's like this. I think it's like that. That's the whole point of the series was what are you saying? People are going to take it and absorb it and come to whatever opinions they have. But I wanted them to get it from somebody who was on the inside. What is tech responsible for? What is tech not responsible for? And, mm -hmm. Is tech just a problem or can tech also be a solution? And we've
we learned a lot here today. Yes, yes. That's great. Okay. I will email you shortly, and thank you for coming out, sir. Thank you. See you soon. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm.